you doing, Coach? <laughs> you doing all right? Yeah, yourself. I'm doing fantastic. I'm always doing fantastic. So I'm here so. competing. I love it. So you must have the, the receivers must have had a good practice today. You know what? Every day is a day for a good practice because we get to learn more. You know, <laughs> get, a, get a chance to learn more about themselves. I get to learn more about them, and then we get to watch the film and uh, and get a chance to correct some things and, and make things better. So every day is a great practice day. All right. So what what have you learned out of your group in this short period of spring practice? Um, I learned that you know we got some guys out there who are really. Uh, have the opportunity to be impact players. Um, these guys are out there, and they've learned the playbook very well um, throughout this offseason already. You know, and I know we had a pretty short and modified offseason, but they've learned the playbook really well. It's been impressive to, you know, not have to run around every play and let them know what to do on every single play. So it's been it's been really good. They've done a good job. That, okay? And then, you know what, there, there's some things that we need to do technically to, to be able to get better. And, uh, you know, I've, I've – Take it upon myself as well to call around, talk to some people, and so on and so forth to try to do everything in my power to help these guys get better at their craft. Um, is, is this? I mean, you do have some youth in this group that um, you're still trying to figure out, maybe a little bit. Uh, but the fact that they've picked up on the playbook, how how how, how much is that a promising sign for 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 where they're at in their development? Certainly, you know, for guys like T.J. Sheffield, who you guys haven't seen a lot, and Malik Carr. I mean, these guys, uh, this offseason, they, they put the time in, and you can definitely tell. And, you know, at the end of the day, there's one thing that's different between knowing the playbook, but then also executing uh, the techniques that you want to execute at a high level. And not just on one play, you know, not just early on in practice, not just later, late in practice. It's uh, throughout the practice. So, uh, there's no question. These young guys are taking it upon themselves. Mershon, I mean, these guys are really uh, taking it to heart that the playbook is important and they're showing on the practice field. Where the, who, who's competing at the slot position right now for you? Oh, we got a lot of guys competing at that slot position. Uh, you know, with Deion Burks being out there, obviously Jackson Panther, uh, I like to call him my blanket. You know, just because, you know, he's been around for so long. He's like a child who has had a blanket for their entire life. And then T.J. Sheffield, obviously, competing his tail off at that slot position as well. So the good thing about it is we're a lot we're, – we're capable of moving guys around uh, and giving other players the opportunity to get in that slot position as well. You know, Malik Carr, obviously, David Bell. These guys are all, you know, getting a chance to be in that slot position uh, as we start to evolve within, within the offense. Now, is uh, Marcellus Moore with you guys now, or is he still in track? You know what? He, he comes to our practices from time to time, and um, he participates in a few things, but not a lot, just in order to keep him healthy, as well as not put a bunch of mileage on his legs so that he can go out there and compete for a, a, hopefully a championship in uh, track and field. But I mean, will you get him at some point this spring at more of a full time role? Or I'm not certain of that. I don't know that it'll be at a full time role just because uh, you know I mean, he has a chance to be a Big Ten champion and uh, possibly a qualifier later on down the road at nationals. So um, that was part of the the whole conversation, the discussion, in recruiting the young man uh, that he wanted to compete at a high level. At one point, he set the bar really, really high. What's the plan in the NFL and running the Olympics. So um, uh, Coach Brom has always done a great job over the history of the years I've been with him. Gosh, we run track and giving them the opportunity to out there to compete if, if that's something that they want to do. This uh, Malik Carr, we got a brief look at him last year in a couple games. And uh, where's he at now? And then what do you need from him at the end of the spring? He needs to be doing what? Well, certainly right now, he's a guy who is trying to impose him his will on every person that he is against throughout the practice. He's made a ton of big plays already throughout this fall. I think uh, yeah, Monday's practice, he had 12 targets with head catch, something along the lines. So the young man is really starting to – to show that he is capable of making big time play in, in okay, and obviously that transitions to the game. Now, certainly um, things that he'll need to work on. I want to see him be more twitchy, especially after the scrimmage. Um, I also want to make sure that 
that we're lining him up at a lot of different places so that we can't get a beat, so teams can't get a beat on him and uh, create matchup problems. I mean, uh, he, he has got really strong hands, and he's deceptively faster than a lot of people think when he stands out there at six foot five, 240 pounds. So uh, he's, he's a young man right now who's turned into a grown man on this team and his teammates sort of are leaning on him and expecting him to make big plays out here. Is uh, Mashawn Rice healthy enough to participate full-time now? Uh, you know, uh, we don't really talk about the health of our players, but Mashawn Rice has been doing spectacular. Our sprint. Um, he's been doing really well, um, helping the other guys, great footwork, releases, things of that nature. So, um, he, he's been excellent throughout this, this, this spring ball, and I've been very happy. Right. Uh, I wanted to ask you about another guy that's not on your team, but I think you know Rondell Moore. Uh, <laughs> uh, just, uh, I mean, were you surprised that he graduated in two and a half years? Not at all. Uh, well, somewhat. I, I knew the plan was three, but when he got down to the point where he was going to take 27 hours, I think it was, during his last semester uh, so that he could make sure that he graduated in two and a half years, I mean, that, that was pretty surprising. I mean, um, however, he did really well in those courses. Uh, obviously, he had opted out for a while there, and so he was really dead set in the books, I mean, basically working out I mean, straight into the books. And he busted his butt to make it happen. But I mean, that's the attitude and demeanor of that young guy. From the day he stepped on camp, uh, he knew that he didn't want to come back and finish up that degree. He, he didn't want to. Do um, he wanted to go ahead and move forward so that he could, you know, spend some time to take care of his mother. And, um, and make sure that, you know, they can move on with their lives uh, in the direction of the football league. So he didn't want to make all make all that time to come back and do all that. He didn't want that. And uh, there's no question about it. That was the most important thing for his mother. She really wanted to make sure that he accomplished that. And, and he, he, he definitely checked that off, off the list. Thank you. No problem. Tom Hart. Jamarcus, give us a give us an idea how, how David Bell's looking. Looking great, fantastic, running faster. Uh, he's getting stronger. Um, he's David Bell, man. Let's let's. let's I'm, I'm just gonna tell you, he he just knows how to make plays. Uh, I mean, that's that's just what he does. Um, there, there's there's nothing different about his playmaking ability. Um, that is going to show up during the spring ball. He he just does that. Now, there's some subtle tweaks that we need to make in his game. Um, you know, I talked to a, one NFL receiver coach today, and he, he he's talking about, you know, catching the ball with his hands versus catching the ball with his body and things of that nature. So, obviously, those are things that we're, we're, we're making strides on that, and I think he made strides this past year with that, even false stepping at the line of scrimmage. Uh, just just little tweaks that we're trying to make with him to help him get better. Being able to stick and cut um, on plants and be sharper on a lot of those plants and cuts uh, when he's making 45 degree turns, 90 degree turns. Um, those things we're definitely uh, working on to, to get better at. What about Milton Wright? It seems like that's a kid who could be poised for a breakout here. You know what? I thought Milton Wright played really well for us this past year. And uh, he, he, he right now is one of those guys that, they're, everyone's counting on. Uh, they expect him to win every single rep that he that he's out there. They expect him to compete for the ball over and over again. The good thing about it, you know, they've been competing heavy with you know um, trees, obviously, and uh, and and we we really he's really because of his length and 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 his quickness and speed. You know, he's really given a couple of those guys some problems. And and you know what, Milton Wright's the one that steps up along with Malik Carr to go compete against that guy and, and give him as much problems as they possibly can. So, you know, we count on that young man right now. And, uh, you know, the, the more reps he gets, the better off he's going to be. And just the last two guys, Jamarcus, um, <clears throat> Abdul Rahman Yassin and Colin Sullivan, uh, are, they out, are they out there? Are they looking good? Any progress report on those two? Colin still running really well. Um, you know, being a kid that didn't get into the game much this past year, you know, he's really itching and, and chomping at the bit to to get every opportunity that he possibly can. The great thing about the young man, he's always available. 
you know, uh, the best ability is availability and he's always available. So that's, that's really huge for him. Um, he's learning how to play the position. Um, he, uh, we were talking in, in the meeting the other day and, you know, he, he was, he was pretty much a bully in, uh, in high school. You know, he, he bullied a lot of defenders that he, he went up against and you can't always do that when you get to the big 10. So he's learning to be more smooth and, and, and be able to, you know, be have a little bit more finesse in how he moves and how he makes moves on the field, his route running technique, and so on and so forth. So he, he's getting better with that. Abdur, unfortunately, you know, he's still recovering from uh, the injury from this fall. So, uh, unfortunately, he's not participating with us. Yeah, okay. Hey, one last one. Does, do you guys have a nickname for – you said black Blanket for Jackson Anthem. Anything else? You call him Grandpa or anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, hey, he should be grandpa, but you know what? Jack Jackson get a lot of respect around here. Um, he's put in the time and, you know, at one point led our team and catches, or I'm sorry, maybe just touchdowns. And I mean, and, and, and you know what? Yeah. Well respected for the roles that he's taken on with, you know, the emergence of guys like Rondell and other guys. And, and, and then, you know, never, ever complaining, never missing a beat, not missing practices, pra playing games on a broken foot. I mean, some of these guys, they, they have no idea the, the thing, the blood, sweat, and tears that that young man has, has poured into this program. I mean, uh, very much respected around here for, for what he's done with this program. So um, he is a grandpa, but I, I call him my, my Snuggie at times. That's my blanket. So I love Jackson. Thank you, Coach. Right, thanks. Uh, Dondre Clemens, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, Coach, what goals do you have set for this group to accomplish kind of by the end of spring? So by the end of spring, I, I want us to be a lot better in and out of our breaks. So that's what we're working on a lot right now, sitting down in our, into our breaks and then accelerating out of our breaks. So I don't know if you really want me to get into the technical terms of route running, but that's what that's what I need us to get better at, okay? And then uh, the second most important thing is we need to be more physical at the line of scrimmage, okay? Physicality at the line of scrimmage is, is one of the most important things in the Big Ten, all right? With, with the way corners are allowed to play the game in our conference, okay, which is very different from some other places, Hey, we got to be more physical uh, at the line of scrimmage in order to be able to combat what, what these guys are, are being allowed to do. So um, certainly that those two things are, are the highest, most important things on the list of things that we need to get accomplished this spring. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll be right back. 